what, what do you got? You got anything? Uh, I got a couple like uh, news items I heard today that were kind of hilarious. So, all right, Let's start throw that in there. Um, we could do the topical. Hey, it's St. Patty's shit. So, all right. We'll uh, we'll see. We'll just right. see. I'll let you uh, lead in. Oh shit! Hang on. Let me start recording audio. Oh, My good. me too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> see. Who. <laughs> <laughs> all right hey everyone welcome to fake philosophers uh on this the very special post saint patrick's day episode where uh it, it, it would be what, wait one two days after saint patty's when Couple this episode days, yeah. airs um mike how was your saint patrick's day did you work um i got off a little early and then i i went home nice yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm not drinking the green beer tonight. It's just uh, good as just, you shouldn't. It's just, it's just as you beer. shouldn't. <laughs> I think we did an episode last year about St. Patty's, and every yeah. time we it somehow comes up about you know, but you know, in case you haven't listened to all the other episodes, <laughs> um, Mike's not the biggest fan of St. Patty's because that's when all the amateur drinkers come out. And, it uh, it depends they, on which hat I'm wearing. The Bar, business maker, b- the business, business owner businessman hat. hat. Love St. Patrick's Day. It's a great day. Yeah, yeah. Bartender hat. Fucking hate it. Um, just being an adult, <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, as a uh, adult drinker, I mm-hmm. mean, it's it, you know, I, I I would say one of my hobbies is drinking. I enjoy drinking, and I do it in my free time, so that's a hobby. But <laughs> I, uh, I think if you have to come up with some stupid reason to drink, then it's silly. Just drink. Mm. If you want to drink, just drink. Just drink. Yeah. So, Mike, you know, I, not to put words in your mouth, but you're kind of like me. You're you're a hobbyist, a drinker hobbyist. Yeah. Um, so when you see the amateur, the weekend warrior uh, drinkers come out St. Patty's, it's pretty pretty ridiculous. Yeah. It's stupid. I don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> I like their tips, and that's it. But, business uh, As a businessman, lovely day. Great day. I've told... I've told the story before, but I'll say it again because I like saying it. Uh, my first St. Patrick's Day, when all my friends were over 21, we went to Mike's bar and he was bartending. And uh, I asked him for, I remember going up to the bar and ordering two Guinnesses because well, fuck, me, fuck me. And uh, I went up to Mike. I was like, two Guinnesses. It was really loud. They're like, two Guinnesses. And he's like, yeah, you know, he does his mic nod. And then he, ru- he goes back and he brings back a couple... Uh, Drafts it. <laughs> I didn't know what that was for a minute. <laughs> it's my fucking so, cat. Me, me for those of you listening the to the podcast, this is one of my cats right here. Anyway, uh, Mike goes back to the to the taps. He pours a couple of Guinness and he pulls it out. And here I'm thinking, okay, I've drank before. I've ordered beers before. I ordered a Coors Light. It was about three dollars. So I handed Mike a ten dollar bill. And Mike very uh, sheepishly leaned in and said, hey, uh, uh, the imports are actually like $7 each. And I was like, oh, shit. And I pulled out a 20. And I I, I'll, I don't know why that's what I remembered, but I remember that, that was pretty funny. I learned a lot that night. You know, it's it's kind of no, – I think that, that makes sense, though, because even um, there was a guy uh, – his name is Josh – who worked for us for a little bit. So he would sometimes, you know, have a beer after work. He was a cook. Mm-hmm. This is years ago. And so he would get like a craft draft, and it was like – you know, six, seven bucks or something at the time. And then uh-huh. like years passed and he came in and ordered like a craft draft and it was like 10, 11, a tall, a tall one. It was like 10, 11 bucks. And he was like, what the fuck? Last time I was here, yeah. it was only like seven bucks. And I was like, that was 10 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> well, you should, should change it. You've been out the game a long time, bro. Yeah. But um, like CJ and San Andreas, he came back and it's like, dude, <laughs> things have changed, man. Here we go again. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I can. I think I ranted last year about it, uh, but I just don't. So you drank Guinness. Good. If you if you want to quote unquote celebrate St. Patrick's Day, drink a Irish beer. Cool. But then like the green people put green shit in their Bud Light, and the, almost every bartender group I'm in on Facebook, like the day after St. Mm-hmm. Patrick's Day, everyone posts mm-hmm. photos of their green hands. Oh yeah, because the dye gets fucking everywhere. Anyway, um. I realized today, 
Um, cause my wife is out of town. She's visiting her parents cause uh, medical shit. <sighs> Sad story. Sorry. I didn't bring it down. Okay. No, like, my wife's out, of, <laughs> wife's out of town and, uh, I've got, you know, I got the place to myself for the weekend. Cool. I, <laughs> it's weird. So much okay. masturbating. Uh, so much yeah, like, uh, for everyone who, who, who hasn't caught on, we recorded this the Thursday before this episode aired. Um, yes. So <laughs> we're still talking about future tense, but I, I want to say it in the past tense. I worked on Saturday. I mean, assuming I worked on Saturday because as of right now, I'm planning to work on Saturday. Wife's out of town for the weekend. So I'm working, you know, the weekend, getting that overtime. It's great. Um, Friday night, tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, I will be probably just eating and drinking alone at my apartment with the fucking cats. They're cool. But today I was realizing as I was uh, leaving work, I think I, and I've like was doing the numbers and I, and I didn't want to delve too deep because it just made me more depressed, but I've, I think I've spent more St. Patrick's days, like the majority of the St. Patrick's days of my life alone at home. I don't think I, because I, I hate going out and it, it just ha- happenstance. I think like the, the years my wife and I have been together, the majority of the time we've like, she's either been out of town or whatever. And this weekend again, she'll be out of town. But I, I, I spend most St. Patrick's day at my apartment just by myself. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I don't, I don't know real complaints. It's fine, but it's well, weird. I think- it's a weird Maybe not consciously, but I think on some level you're probably like me. Granted, I used to go out a lot, but like I don't need. I generally don't like being around people anyway. Yeah, um, people I don't know, strangers. I love my friends and people come over and shit. I love it, but uh, I don't like being around large crowds of people that I don't know. I'm not a kid anymore. Who you know, I used to go to raves and shit, and I loved it. Now I'm kind of like I don't like people. So why would you want to go out on St. Patrick's Day when you know everyone's going out? <laughs> it's it's the epitome of everything I don't like. I don't know about you, but I <laughs> I don't know if it was I don't even think it's an age thing because I think I've always been this way. I will purposely go to microbreweries and bars on days I know it's going to be an off night because I know there won't be a lot of people there. Oh, hundred percent same way. I it's kind of a, a joke with me. Um, there's a there was a brewery in my my last place that we lived uh, nearby. I think you we walked there from my yeah near my, the near the train near the train station. Yeah. A yeah. hop secret, really cool spot. So them and No Clue and Rancho. I remember I would joke around to where like when they when they were kind of first fresh, not a lot of people would go there, and I'd mm-hmm. go there and it'd be sick because yeah. nobody else is there. And then as they get more popular, more people go in. It's like you're proud that they're doing well, but at the same time you're like this is fucking bullshit. It is, it is fucking bullshit. I mean, we, uh, we, we tried this brewery, uh, by where we live in North Carolina, where it new place, never been. And we went on like a Tuesday night, which is just like the brewery might as well have been closed and they would have broke even, but cause no one was there except me and my wife and we were sitting outside and it was great. Like we had a great time and just enjoyed it. Uh, a couple weeks back, she's like, I'd love to go like again when it's like when there's like people there. And I was like, oh, God. But we Why? went and we went on, we went on a Friday and we got food and it was packed and we stood in line. And what did we do? Not much different. We just kind of hung out with ourselves and chatted. And the only difference was there's a lot of people there. And we're like, OK, well, all right. As long uh, as I could find a seat. Yeah. There was a day I think I went to Hop Secret and there was not a seat in the place. Mm. This is when mm-hmm. I still walked there, and it was like I think Erica was gone for some reason. It was like a Friday night, and I was like, "I'm gonna go walk to the brewery and Saint get Patri- shit faced." Saint Patrick's Day, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, I remember there was not a seat in the house, and I was like, "This fucking sucks." Good for them. This sucks. <laughs> I think I, I got one beer and I left because I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, speaking of drinking, I forgot about this. Saint I have Patrick's a story Day? to tell, Mitch. Oh yeah, go for it. I like I like Mike's stories because Mike. Here's here's why I like Mike's stories. Before you get into your story, here's why I like Mike's story. Because I was watching YouTube videos on breaking down good storytelling because I feel like my stories suck, and I'm like, why is it my? You know, I'm watching these videos and tutorials on how to tell stories well, and I'm like, oh, Mike does all this shit. I'll tell you after you tell your story. Now that you're thinking about it, <laughs> now I'm like, what do it. I do? Um, so context. This is important. Context. Oh, that's I'm strike not sure. one. That's strike one. That's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's right at the top. Do not start with the premise. Um, <laughs> but no, but this is important. So we've discussed this to where, like, for better or for worse, I drink a lot. 
Uh-huh. Don't consider myself an alcoholic. It's not like I depend on it. I, like throughout the day, I'm not secretly taking shots in the office. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But not yet. I drink a lot. Uh, Same so boat. I have a high tolerance. Yeah. As an example, and we discussed this on the show, last 4th of July, I had a lot of people over. Mm-hmm. And since I knew I wasn't going anywhere, because um, people <laughs> were coming over, I started drinking at noon. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. That was fun. Yeah. that's what, So I, I started drinking at noon. And I continued to drink. Like, there was never a moment where I didn't have a beer in my hand unless I was taking a piss or using the restroom or something, you know? Um, like I said, taking a piss or using the restroom. Uh, yeah, very anyway. different. Very different. Yeah. Um, but And I went till 2 a.m. that night, constantly drinking throughout the day. And I, I got really <laughs> drunk, and I had a bad hangover, but I went to yeah. work the next day. Uh, so that that's just an example of a heavy <laughs> drinking day for me. Because that's going to come into play. This past Sunday, we had uh, my bar had an employee party, which is, you know we usually get a party bus, we jump around different spots, get some food, you know, etc. So we went to a couple breweries down in Anaheim. Um, cool. Uh, that's we, a drive. Yeah, it's a party bus. We're just driving around and shit, you know, having a good time. Um, I had a couple beers on the bus. Had two beers at one brewery, one beer at another. Anyway, drive back to Rancho. We go to one bar. And I have one beer there, and I'm I'm tipsy. I'm like, like I'm mm-hmm. drunk, but I'm not mm-hmm. like fucking falling over and being crazy. And then we go to the infamous, uh, what do we call it, um, organized crime bar. Oh my I god, think, I love I, it. I think we called we in the past episode we, we were it, gonna call it casino. Wise guys, we called it wise guys. Wise guys, sure. Why I like wise guys better. Yeah, and we go there. And I haven't been there. I used. To, I think I told. I said it before. I haven't been there in years. Like I used to go all the time, and I've not been there in years. You know what? This hold on. Pause. Blows my mind because I, I shit you not. Two weeks ago, a buddy of mine, a local rancho friend of mine, texted me a picture of that bar. He was standing outside, um, going back because that was a regular spot for us as well. And yeah. like I was like, oh my god, nostalgia. And I'm like, I haven't seen. It. I'm blow. It blows my mind that it's still there, still open, still rocking in the free world. But right. yeah, um, go for go for it. Anyway, continue. And context, more context. Um, I, I want to say first. I want to say first. I I love this place. Uh, the staff there, like the bartender, remembered me. I love it. They take care of everybody. That being said, the place is pretty fucking grimy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And and the staff knows it. Like, I mean, I've I've had discussions with them behind the scenes. But um, anyway, I'm pretty sure so, the owner knows it, and they're like, you probably, know, well, probably. you know, what do you want? Uh, so we get there, um, and I walk in and kind of, like I said, nostalgia. I haven't been there in years. I used to go there all the time. I was like, oh, this is kind of fucking cool. I walk in, I will go to the bar. Bartender recognizes me. We're friends on Facebook. I haven't seen her in years too. And she's like, oh my (laughs) fucking Mike, what's up? And she comes over. I give her a hug. She goes back. We're talking. How you been? I'm like, good. It's our just staff party. You know, we're just having a good time, blah, blah, blah. I order around for, um, a bunch of the servers that are with me. Huh? Did she say? Did she say the usual and like pour it for you? Or <laughs> she was just like, "What do you want?" And I was like, "Just pick an IPA. I don't care." Because like, I, I, like I said, nice. I was tipsy. I wasn't sober, and I wasn't gonna try to go look at taps. I was like, "Just get me an IPA. I don't give a shit." Nice. Yeah. And um, so then most of the staff that was with me, a bunch of servers, cooks. It, I should mention all the servers were more very, context. <laughs> more context. All the servers <laughs> were looking very scantily clad. Um, which just cause it's the holiday party, we're on a party bus. Let's dress like we're going to a club. I just wore regular shit, but they're all dressed, you know, like cleavage, all this shit. They look good. That's it. They look good. <laughs> and so they come down and we, and I get them around, close out, whatever. And then someone's like, Hey Mike, you want to play, you want to play pool? And I was like, I'm not good at it, but I'll play with you. Sure. So I go over there. I put my drink down um, on this like little shelf thing that like, there were several of the girls put their drinks there. I put my drink down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went and said hello to somebody that I knew there. A couple people. Came back, continued drinking. Mr. Continued Popular over here. Mr. Popular <laughs> over here. Uh, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Rancho. I, I know a few people. Yeah. I knew a few on. people. Um, I started playing pool, and I, I remember going like, wow, I'm uh, I'm getting really fucking tired really, really fast. Oh, no. And then the last thing I remembered was oh, uh, no. one of our servers no. handing me a pool stick, and I went to take a shot. Last thing I remembered. Um... Oh my God, Mike, <laughs> Mike, Mike, yeah. did Mike get miked? What happened? So, so 
then I woke up the next. So I there was a flash at some point. I remember uh, my partner, my brother in law. It was just a quick <laughs> flash, and he was like, "Okay, we're getting you an Uber home, bro. We're getting you an oh, Uber home." Oh no! Oh no! And so, granted, I Ubered to Rancho, so it wasn't like I drove anyway. So the plan right, was right, to right. Uber home, so it was fine. But and, I woke and up. Wise guys is in Rancho, so it's yes. not you know right there. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I was Ubering back to anyway. Um, but so I woke up on Monday morning, fucking, my head was one of the worst hangovers I can remember having. And once like I got my brain right, I was just like, how the fuck did this happen? Cause oh my I, God. cause it's, cause I'm not, I'm not, I don't know about you, but like a lot of times when I wake up, I'll just kind of remember how I went to bed. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I started remembering, like, I don't remember anything. How the oh fuck did God. I get home? I, and I started, I was like, what the fuck? And I started putting the pieces together and I was like, so, I, I, so the, the, what the fuck, why is he saying what the fuck? This is what Mike was talking about with the context before we're, 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 we're professional drinkers. You know, yes. we, it's, it's rare for someone like Mike or myself to be blackout. We've browned out before where like, I mean, I was talking about, you know, a couple weeks ago, I did that service meeting. I browned yeah. out hardcore that night. It's like, oh man, I drank way too much. I had a horrible hangover. But I remember saying goodbye to everyone, closing up my tab, going up to my room and laying down and going to sleep. I remember calling my wife and like chatting with her before I fell asleep. Exactly. But um, I have not blacked out. I've blacked out once and I don't, you know, I don't remember it. Uh -huh, and even, but I have blacked out in the past once or twice. Um, yeah. Yeah. But even like Erica's been around when that's happened. Like I remember when, when uh, my friend Jesse passed away uh, some time ago that yeah. night. I got oh, yeah. fucking annihilated. Yeah. Uh, I think I threw down like five barley wines within one hour. And barley Holy wines are fucking heavy. So shit, I, I blacked fuck. out for like 20 to 30 minutes. But uh -huh. And I, I was with Erica and she said I was still speaking clearly. I was fucking wow. emotional wreck. But I ended up kind of coming to, like after about half an hour, I kind of regained myself. Uh -huh. You know, kind of gained my composure and, you know, whatever. But so for this, still though, I was just still though, all contact that that's the context we're saying. So for Mike to be like, holy shit, after IPAs and day drinking, I've day drank, you know, a lot, well, I'm, I'm speaking as Mike, but like this did not add up. Why did I not, not remember? Yeah. So I actually went and I'm not, I, I'm not going to break it down, break it down, but I started going through like, what did I drink? <laughs> okay. All and right. So I, I went through the, the count and I did, I'll fuck it. I'll go through it. Complete the story. <laughs> We on the way, it, like we should, we should invent a slang term for this. When you go back and try to figure out exactly what you drank, we should call it. <laughs> the, we should call it the sh the shopping list, or you know how like list, uh, you, you know how like when you know when when douchebags talk about how many people they've slept with, like yeah. how many girls have you bet? They call it the head count. You know, mm -hmm. if you're trying to recall the night before all the drinks you've had, we'll call it the shopping list. Shopping list. I like that. I go with that. So I had two beers. So we start at four o'clock. I had two Four. beers on the way to the first brewery. We went to Golden Road in Anaheim. I'm going to write this shit down. Yeah, so I had two beers on the way to Golden Road. At Golden Road, I had also had two beers. On the way, we went from Golden Road to Brewery X. I had one beer. So we're at five now. Uh-huh. At Brewery X, I had like half a beer because I ordered a pitcher for, for some of the people. And okay. I drank like half my cup and I put it somewhere and I, I couldn't find it again. And the pitcher was... Gone. So I had, I had like half a beer there. Okay. Uh, so call it five and a half if you want. Um, when we got back on the, the party bus, all the uh -huh. beers I liked were gone. Oh, well, fuck that. So I didn't drink anything until we got back to Rancho, went to the first bar. I had one more beer. And then we went to Wise Guys and I uh -huh. ordered another beer. I don't think I finished it though. So that's like seven and a half technically. Seven, seven and a half. You're at seven and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So, on top let's of that, assume, let's assume they're all sixteen ounce IPAs. Yeah, that's I think still not. That's still not. That's that's no. not even brownout level. Okay. Yeah, and um, and I think one of them at Golden Road was an Imperial IPA. To be fair, but this is also over the course of seven or eight hours. Okay. So that's yeah. Oh my a, god! There's no way. Yeah. No way. So and to be fair, on top of that. Um, on to the party fair. bus, one of our guys had one of those pre-made margarita things. and so, so he poured a little bit of that in my mouth. He's kind of going those around sharing it. And then I took a shot with someone of some weak-ass shit. But okay, still. so you have one, one shot. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we call a shot call a beer and shots. a half, maybe. Yeah. But still, so even if you added that up, so let's call it nine drinks total. Yeah. Over Over the hours. course of seven or eight hours, 
yeah. for someone with my tolerance. Yeah. Like, it, it made no fucking sense to me. And then on top of that, I remember, like I said, when I was talking to the bartender at Wise Guys, even other people, when I talked to them later, were like, no, yeah, you were speaking very clearly. Like, you were mm. drunk, but, like, you weren't, like, slurring. Like, you were, you were speaking. I was like, yeah. And I went downhill fast, and I remember thinking, like, I'm getting really fucking, like, I'm, I'm fading. Uh-huh. And I went down within, like, 25 minutes of that. So but Long story short. Yeah. Go on. You first. Um, uh, uh, um, I was thinking of like other factors. Were you, cause I remember, um, when was that? I don't remember. Um, are you on any medication, any new medication, anything like that? Were you taking any nope. like, like muscle relaxers or, or anything? No, um, I, were I you, take my blood pressure medication, which doesn't do anything to that. Effect. Um, were you dehydrated? Did you get enough sleep? Any, other, were you eating? Were you eating? I was, so I was eating. Um, I ate that morning. Typically I don't eat in the morning, but I ate that morning. For this reason. Okay. And then at Brewery X, we uh, I had several slices of pizza, some fries, and some other shit. Brewery X is amazing, and their food is amazing, too. Go it is. To Brewery the food's X. very good. Yeah, so... It is Brewery X. Brewery X is dope, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you put all that together, and I'm like, there's no fucking way there's I no blacked way. out like that. Because so what ended up happening, uh, over the course of the week, I started, like, talking to people and piecing all this shit together. Uh-huh. So it's I, I don't know how I behaved while I was playing pool once I once I was gone. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so pretty much we we've hinted at it. Yeah, I got I got fucking roofied. I think <laughs> someone there it is. At, <laughs> so we haven't I was like, said might as well it just yet. Fucking say it. So we haven't I said it yet, and I've been I've been sitting on it this whole time because Mike yeah. messaged me I think Tuesday or something like that. I was like I think I got fucking roofied, and I was like, whoa, my what? And he's like. Mike's like, we got something to talk about on, and I didn't yes. realize it until like 10 minutes ago, but yeah. Yeah. So, Ugh. so and granted, I'm not fucking vain. I don't think someone was trying to roofie me, but like I said, all the girls were dressed like little ho, little hoes, you know? Uh huh. So I think someone was trying to get one of them and they got me instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. It right. was, it was friendly fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think someone at Wise Guys, some yeah. guy, was trying to yeah try to get them. And the thing is, I've known multiple people who've gotten roofied there before. So oh, that's another no. that's another factor. If we were like a yard house or something, I'd be like, nah, that's not it. But since there's a history, a historical precedent here, yeah, I was like, okay. So anyway, or uh, they just they, put too much, or they put too much bleach in their dishwasher, and you know, there's a good <laughs> lining of bleach in the in the in the glasses, and it fucked you up. Sure. But All something, right. yeah, so there's something in my drink. And so what, what I pieced together later, um, it was kind of funny. So every person I talked to about this, yeah, uh, minus one, was always like, you didn't get roofied. And then once I explained everything, like I have just now, they were like, yeah. oh, yeah, you got fucking roofied. <laughs> <laughs> is it fucked up that like when you say, all you have to do is come up to me and say, hey, Mitch, uh, I blacked out. I'd be like immediately like, no, you got roofied. You don't black out. You don't black out. For you to get blacked out is one is going to bankrupt the bar. Two, you probably have to be some pretty high numbers. Yeah, it have to be pretty yeah. high numbers. Um, but yeah, so I, I put it together, and what ended up happening was at some point we were leaving, of course, and apparently I like ate shit in like a bush. Oh no! And everyone was laughing at me. So like <laughs> they all think I'm just hammered. I think that's yeah. part, like they all think I'm fucking crazy hammered. And um, I'm, I'm the boss, and I'm fucking falling into bushes and shit. <laughs> and um, and so my brother-in-law, who was there, he's my my business partner. He was drunk too, but like he was laughing. And they they got me on the bus, and apparently on the way back to the our bar, I was like kind of falling asleep on the bus. But like I was just like, even with my eyes open, just falling back and forth. Anytime the bus oh, would break, man. I'd eat shit. And then back at the real, our real bar, quick, yeah, real quick, was your, was your wife there? No, but she okay. she's part of the story. Okay. Um, so then, yeah, so we went back to our bar and I, apparently I went inside to use the restroom. And so the, the door swings in to our restroom and apparently I, I kind of locked myself in because I kept trying to push it open, but it oh, swings no. in. So like everyone, like the people who stayed were laughing at me cause I was like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> and, um, and then like, I, apparently I was like, I'm going to Uber home. And you know, my brother-in-law was like, just come crash at our house. We're right down the street. And I was like, no, I'm Ubering home, I'm Ubering home. And so I guess they were just waiting for me to get an Uber. And I was like walking back and forth outside with my phone. And I never called an Uber. No. no so they're, they were like, what no. the fuck are you doing? And this was, <laughs> and this was part of it. 
was part, one of the flashes I remember was my brother-in-law kind of with his hand on me going, yeah. okay, I'm going to get you an Uber, dude. I'm going to get you an Uber. Oh, my God. So he called an Uber. And I guess around that point, he called my sister to say, like, yeah. yo, your brother's fucked up. I have never seen him like this. Because like wow. apparently I wasn't even making sense. I was just mumbling gibberish, et cetera. Which, wait, hold on. Which sister? Uh, uh, mother... Uh, 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 mother of pit four bull, pit bull sister or the other one not the pit bull sister other one gotcha okay um shit okay wow okay <laughs> that's who he's married to and so he called her yeah. and so she then i believe either called or text erica saying like hey just so you're aware because i guess like it's like <laughs> midnight like 12 30 at this point or later oh man the night is like, young yeah she's like just so you're aware like mike's really fucked up and i guess she heard me uh, while ryan called her ryan was my brother-in-law she heard me mumbling in the we'll, back. We'll, we'll, we'll cut that later. We'll bleep that out. I don't but. care. <laughs> but, so, but she said, because I talked to her the next or two days later about it, she said she could hear me on Ryan's phone just mumbling wow. gibberish. And she was like, you sounded extremely fucked up. Wow. And so she, I forgot she texted or called Erica, letting her know what was going on. Hey, we're throwing him in an Uber. We don't know how good he's going to be getting out of the Uber, so you might want to wait up for him. So then from Erica's point of view, she said that she was kind of looking out our, our, you know, our front door has the windows. She saw yeah. the Uber pull up and apparently I just like stumbled the fuck out of it. And the guy, I, I'm sure this guy thought I was dying or something. Cause he was, I guess with what she said, he's like, are you sure you got everything? Are you sure you're okay? Like calling to me, like, are you sure wow. you're okay? And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, from what she said, I walked towards the door and like she opened it because she was standing there and i guess like well when i say walking towards the door i mean like going back and forth five yeah, feet yeah. at a time towards the direction towards of the, the house. door and i guess she opened the door and she said like i kind of stopped and like looked up at the house like is this is this my house because oh like my God. She, i guess she opened the door and it like startled me like oh my, am i going up to the wrong house and then she was like oh no she, i guess she's like oh no it's mike it's me it's me so I, was like, oh, fuck. And I, I walked in. Oh my god! Oh my god! And I guess like I was like hanging on her, and if you know my wife, she's like half my size. So like she was yeah. like, Jesus Christ! Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she she managed to keep her footing, and then I guess when I got towards our kitchen, like our dinner table, I had my jacket on, which when I woke up, I, I was worried that I lost my leather jacket, and I really oh, loved, jacket. loved that jacket. So I thought I lost it anyway. I didn't. But she said that like I couldn't. I was trying to get it off, but I was so fucking fucked up that like wow. i just kept rolling my shoulders like wow or something. and she was like what are you doing and like she finally figured out i was trying to take my jacket off but, but for whatever reason i, I just couldn't because i was dumb no um, that's that's more than drunk that's on something kind of stuff. yeah and, and so you've I seen guess, enough you've seen enough drunk people to know drunk and then you know that other thing it's like okay they're drunk and they're on something there's they're, a chemical like, Imbalance, they yeah. can't even take their jacket off. They're fucked up. Like, yeah. yeah. And so I guess she, after dealing with me and getting me into bed, text my sister pretty what much did you saying, give him. No, pretty much saying like, this is the worst. I've never seen him like this. Wow. Don't expect him to come to work. Wow. Like she said, like, do not expect him to come to work. There's no way he's making it. Yeah. And, um, sure enough, when my first alarm <laughs> went off in the morning, <laughs> I turned that shit off real fast. I was just like, like nope. Cause like, you know, and you, you, you've worked with family. Like if you, if you didn't show up or you're an hour late, your dad's going to give you shit. Like my brother-in-law gives me shit when I'm late. Sure. And yeah. I did not give a fuck. <laughs> I, I was just like, I'm, there's no way I, I couldn't even get my head hurt so bad. I could not get out of the bed. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, it's worth it. Fire me. I don't give a shit. No, like, so I heard my phone. I was getting texts and shit, and I was like, I don't give a fuck who is texting me right now. <laughs> the the bar could be burning down and I could give a fuck. Like, it was that bad. I was like, I don't give a shit. Please, Lord, please let that be the name of this episode. The bar can be burning down and I could give <laughs> I a fuck. I could give a fuck. But yeah, and like even at one point I was like, I'm just gonna go in late. I'm gonna go in late. Normally I, I leave and I get there around eight o'clock. Yeah, and I think it was like ten thirty rolled around, and I was like, I could still make it by eleven, and mm -hmm. then I was like, No, I do it's not give a fuck. I, I'm not going. Not, in. not today. Not. And today. it was around. So then Erica did call me at one point because she texted me a couple times, just like, Hey, how you doing? How you feeling? And so I think so. That was she the first... put you to bed, and then she left. Like, all right, he seems yeah. fine. I'm going to work. 
<laughs> but so she she texts me like, "Are you are you alive?" And I put, "No, I'm pretty dead." And she called me a little bit later, like around eleven, and she's like, "Hi." When she texts me, "How are you feeling?" That was the first text yeah. she sent. I was like, "Oh shit," because like oh, shit. I knew she saw me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like either I was barfing or something happened for her to text so me. So let's. That. Let's go back to what Mike remembers. He remembers playing pool, winding up a sh- uh, a flash of his brother-in-law saying, you know, you're okay. I'm calling you an Uber. And yeah. then waking up in bed with no memory as to how he got there. And then he's like, you know what? Fuck the bar. I feel terrible. Um, it was. Uh, and then, and then his yeah. wife texts him. Are you alive? And now Mike's like, oh shit. Okay. Yeah. I must've been fucked up. So that's when it started. So that's when, because when I first woke up, like I said, that first alarm woke me up. My headache was so bad, like, I could barely fucking operate. Like, to turn wow. my phone's alarm off was, like, a, ch- a chore. Yeah. And so, it was as time went on, like, because I laid in bed for hours. I was awake, but I was trying to go back to sleep. When I finally, like, like I said earlier, when I started, like, my brain became functional again, that's when I started thinking, like, how the fuck did this happen? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And that's when I started doing the math, everything. And yeah. so the first person, Erica called me a little later after I responded to her text. And she was like, how you feeling? Like, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually worried. Like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm okay now, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I think I got drugged. And she was like, mm. really? Really? Mm. And I was like, yeah, I think I got, I got drugged. Like, I don't think someone was trying to drug me, but like, I think I got drugged. And at first <laughs> she didn't really think, she didn't really believe it. And she told me later, even as she thought more about it, she's like, yeah, like there's no way Mike got that drunk. Yeah. Cause my, because you've, because you've seen like alcohol poisoning is a real thing. I've had like a friends yeah. that have gotten alcohol poisoning and they're that hungover. It's like more than a hangover. You're like literally sick. Yeah, but. and that's another thing. Like if I drank that much where I blacked out, don't you think I may yeah. have thrown up? Oh shit! Okay, I never yeah. threw up. Um, oh okay. But yeah, and even she told me later that she, even she kind of was like, yeah, this doesn't make sense because, like, there's different personality types, and like I, I'm a guardian personality type. That's not me bragging, but it's very much, especially it's my staff. So I'm not going to mm-hmm. go overboard because okay, I need to make sure yeah. my staff's okay. Right, right, so right. So there's right. already my personality. I'm not, like I said, when I had people over at my house, I was like, fuck it. It's my house. I'm not going anywhere. Whatever. Yeah. But we're out and about. Like, I'm trying to look after people. So there's, there's no reason why I would just get trashed like that. Yeah. So even when she, by the time she got home, she was kind of leaning towards like, yeah, maybe you did get drugged. Mm. And then, like I said, I talked to my sister and I talked to some of the employees and at first, I was like, I think I got roofied. Like I said earlier, like everyone's reaction was like, really, really, Mike? And then I would explain <laughs> everything, and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, you got fucking roofied. Uh, <laughs> so it was just it was just a weird experience because like, I've never felt like that before. Where I, yeah. I, I felt myself going down. I was like, oh, my God, and then blacked out. So you think, uh, you think because you were in the company of such attractive servers and all that, that you may have been collateral damage, like a, uh, a misfire or a, or a friendly fire or something like that. I think it was a misfire, which is dumb anyway, because we were all in one big group. So even if some guy successfully roofied one of the chicks, what does he expect to happen? Do you think one of the servers tried to roofie you like maybe like one of uh, your, your like employees was like, you know what? I know he's married, but look at him. <laughs> so actually today I had a conversation with a couple of the servers. <laughs> I'm going to be as vague as fuck just in case. Okay. There, w- cool, cool. there was one server where I kind of mentioned, I was like, I felt like she was coming on to me several Ooh. times throughout the night. And the Ooh. one I was talking to was like, Oh yeah, I saw that hundred percent. But I was like, but he, let's talk physics. She was after your chili peppers, bro. She saw your uh, your garden and was like, yeah, I'm about that. <laughs> I just, just want those jalapenos. Yeah. Um, but I don't think a girl roofing a guy makes sense because just think physics, pra- being pragmatic. A guy right, rape right. or rape, a uh, guy roofing a girl, she uh-huh. passes out, cannot control herself. Guy takes yep. advantage of her. Yeah. If I, if for some reason, let's say one of the servers did roofie me. So I'm, f- one, I'm three times the bitch's size. So there's no way she's going to be able to carry me. <laughs> two. Not bragging. Not bragging. I'm not overweight. Bragging. Uh, two, um, even if she did somehow get me alone somewhere, mm-hmm. I'm not working. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's oh, no, yeah. there's no raping happening because I'm not going to be able to, uh, to partake. See, on my end. And, 
and we can get into a good fake philosopher discussion on on uh, the <laughs> can women rape men, and uh, that's a it's a fun discussion. To clarify, I think they can just, but okay. in this particular case, it'd be whiskey dick times a thousand. <laughs> There'd be no, you know what I'm saying? There'd be no way. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, yeah. No, I, got, no I hear you. I'm just being a dick. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and so, no, yeah. I, like, like I said, I think somebody there was trying to hit one of those girls, and they got me yeah. instead. And okay. now now most of my staff thinks I'm a fucking drunken mess. Other other theory. Other theory. Do you think cool bartender uh, or barmaid or whatever it was, is, is, is barmaid not politically correct? Is I think a, barmaid is now considered derogatory. Shit. It's okay, kind of like an old bar- white guy sit, calling an Asian guy a uh, Oriental. Shit. Okay. Well, I apologize then for nah, that term. But uh, a female bartender, is that all right? Or a yes. bartender? Female bartender. Like, okay. <laughs> Hello, cat. That's my other cat. Dude, yep. fuck off. Like, for real. Like, okay. There you go. <laughs> um, um, the female no. bartender. Do you think, like, she was like... Oh, Mike's cool. Mike's here. Cool. He has a high tolerance. You know, I know he ordered a beer, but I'm going to fuck this guy up. I'm going to pour a couple shots into his beer just to fuck with him because he's cool. And I'm going to give him a wink and he knows what that means. And then you just missed it. And maybe like that is what's going on. I, someone actually asked about that and I'm going to say no. I know. I just did. I asked about it. (laughs) No, but because I've thought about it. That's my point. Um, No, I'm going to say no. I don't, I don't think she had anything to do with it. Okay. I'm just Uh, throwing out theories here. Sure. No. I because can't. it seems such like a like a like a like a just drunk with a gun standing in a like public forum and just firing it into the crowd. The fact that you got roofied. Did anyone else get roofied? Did anyone so, else get like? So the first person outside of Erica that I that I contacted about it was um, her name's Courtney. She's our, our manager slash league bartender. Erica. She wasn't is drinking his that wife, much. by the way. Yeah, Erica's my wife. Um, I texted her at some point during the, the day on Monday and I just was like, Hey, random question. Did any of the girls like t- reach out to you about possibly blacking out or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. And she said, no, everyone, you know, everyone got drunk, but like no, no one, no one said anything about that. Mm-hmm. Why? And I said, I was like, I think I got roofied. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that like I'm the only <laughs> one or wh- whatever the deal is. Yeah, and yeah, she immediately fair, fair she point. was the only she was the only one that didn't doubt it at first. She was like, "That makes complete sense. I've never seen you like that. You definitely weren't Whoa. yourself." She was like, I, "That that makes sense." And she said, "If I remember the text correctly, that like some of the girls were like, because we had a few tables, got up to go dance because like karaoke people were dancing, and they came uh-huh. back. There were like new drinks. Ooh, no, not ooh. That they're, they drinks that they did not order on their table." Oh shit! I thought so, they were ordering new drinks. Okay, no, no, no. Like new drinks appeared on their table, or they got their drinks Whoa. mixed up, or something. And Courtney was like, "Don't drink them. Just get new drinks." Interesting. So that Courtney was like, "I believe it," because like blah blah blah, and she explained, and I was like, "Okay, so I'm not crazy." And she's like, "No, you're not crazy. I, I hundred percent believe it." I was you're like, not. You're not. You're not. You know, proven, but you're not crazy. It's like we're not going to disprove that theory. It's uh, yeah. you're not conspiracy minded. This is an interesting theory. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I got roofied. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's what I was talking to someone. I was like, this shouldn't be funny. It's funny because it's me. It's funny because nothing. Well, I mean, nothing happened happened, you know, so we can laugh about it. But yeah. I mean, you could have. I mean, we when Mike first mentioned it, I think I got roofied. So we have something to talk about. I made some shitty joke about it. It's like, you know, does your butt hurt? <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> And then, like, five seconds later, I was like, or is this not, or is this not funny? Should we not well, joke about this? Well, but. <laughs> I was, so almost every person I talked to about it, it almost ended the conversation with, well, at least it was you and not one of the girls. Which, one, kind oh. of offended me. But at the same time, it makes sense, though, because, like, one, I'm, I, at one, in one regard, I am glad that I took it. I took the hit instead of someone, you know, else. At the same, you know, so that's good. And even if one of the girls got roofied, and we took care of them, so nothing happened. Yeah, it isn't funny. No, it's not funny. If, if but because it was me, and I I fell into a bush, and I was acting like an idiot, it's kind of funny. But if one of the girls got hit, even if she was safe, it wouldn't have been funny. So I mean, I mean, yeah, okay. So let's assume, just for 
conversation that the crime actually happened. Let's say Mike actually got roofied. We've proven it. We had a blood test. He got roofied. Who did it and why? Is it was it was it just some dude sitting at the bar? Was it this old guy like seeing this whole group go in? And you walked up with your like order and he's like, All right, I got this. How and why and when? Like, I have so many questions. So yeah, me too. My my I have two theories, two ideas. One that I lean to a little more strongly. One, I think when I was first ordering the rounds for everyone, because mm-hmm. there were a couple guys sitting at the bar. I think maybe because I ordered my beer first and then I started ordering for everyone else. Okay. So maybe one of the guys at the bar, because you know, I turned and said hello to a couple people on my, my left. These guys sitting on my right maybe reached over and they thought they were getting one of the girls' drinks and they got my beer instead. That's one theory. Okay. The second theory, which I lean stronger to, is when we, were, we started playing pool, um, there was like a shelf near the pool table that I put my drink on and there were several other drinks there that belonged to Ooh. the girls. Oh, okay. And so I put my drink down, and I when I that's what I said. I went and said hello to a few people. Um, I yeah, think it was right, during yeah. that time that when I walked away, that maybe someone walked by and dropped something in it. Um, do you think uh, uh, other theory? It's fucked up. But do you think one of the uh, members of your party was fucking with you and was like, "Hey, let's throw a roofie into Mike's drink"? So one of the, one of the girls I talked to today actually brought that up. Uh, she, yeah. I guess the, the one girl who I said was kind of like coming on to me, or at least it felt like it turns out she was coming uh-huh. on to everybody. So I shouldn't feel special, but, um, uh, oh, well she, like she mentioned her, she's like, she kind of, what about her? like, maybe it was one of the girls. And I was like, nah, I don't think, I don't, I don't think it's, it was one of the servers or the girls uh-huh. or guys, whatever. I don't think it, I don't think they, they would do that. <laughs> Not judging. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. So crazy Holy i know shit. at one point erica on that first day was like do you want to go get tested to see if you got drugged and i said no only because at that point i it just it, it was what it was i, I didn't want to leave the house and it was a whole thing you'd have to leave and like get dressed and all that and no one wants that yeah and, and so part of me kind of wishes i did but at the same time like in my in my in my head i already solved the murder <laughs> I don't need more no, evidence. You you solved the fact that there was a murder. You didn't know who did it or why. Oh, but, that, hey, yeah. There... And I, I had half a mind to like hit up the bartender because I'm friends with her on Facebook and be like, hey, is there any way I can come look at your cameras? But oh. again, I don't, but oh. I, don't know, I don't know any of those fucking people. Even if I pointed one guy out, I wouldn't know who the fuck he was. Yeah, but it, it, all, like, what the fuck? Like, if you have that connection, do it. Oh, my God. Like, that's your assignment this week is go and like reach out and see the cameras and be like, Okay, there it was. There's my drink. That's where it happened. Oh, my God. And then prove it. Otherwise, you're just a super fucking lightweight, bro. Is that what you're really afraid of? It's like you go watch him and then, like, nothing happens. And you're like, oh, my God. I just I just, I just blacked I just, out. I just blacked out. I'm living a lie. Oh, my God. There, There is that, actually. Even though I'm, 99, <laughs> 90, I'm 99.99% convinced it was a roofie. But I do have that 0.01% fear that if I went to go look at the camera and nothing, nothing. happened, I'd be like, oh, my yeah. God, really? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it, it, who said it happened at Wise Guys? It could have happened on the way. You could have grabbed someone else's drink Maybe. on accident on the way and, and whatever. But wooey. you know what? I do want to give a shout out to that whole story. Like there's <laughs> one person that kind of like kind of rings through all the shit of Mike's fucked up night. And that's the Uber driver that drove you home because oh, yeah. that motherfucker answered the call, showed up at the bar that you were at, and your brother-in-law standing in front of a, a, a mumbling, gibberish-filled, fucked-up mic to say, look, you need to take this guy to where he lives, and uh, it's really far away. And he looked past the brother-in-law, and he looked at Mike, and Mike's <laughs> back behind him staggering around, and he's like, yeah, all right. And let Mike into his car knowing that this dude could chuck all over my car. He could shit himself. The dude is fucked up. Somehow this Uber driver got him home and was actually like, hey, you good? You good, bro? You're like, wow. 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 Yeah, no. 100%. That guy's, that four, guy's the, uh, the go to the night. Four and a half stars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that half st- you lost that half star because you didn't walk me to the door. He didn't, um, have, he didn't have water in the backseat. 
Yeah. So anyway, they, that happened. they probably looked at your Uber rating or whatever, and like, because you know they they rate you, and they're oh, like, yeah. oh, this this guy's legit. So it's very unlikely that he'll uh, you know fuck it up. But yep. Are you a tipper? Are you an Uber tipper? Yeah, I am for the most okay. part. All right, cool. I uh, I last weekend we went to a housewarming party. Long story short, we stopped by the. Uh, we were driving three hours away, but before we left, we stopped by our favorite brewery and got like three or four packs of cans to go. You know, like because mm-hmm. we like their beer, we're gonna bring it to this party. I walk in, we walked into the bar, it was a Friday night, and they're like starting to warm up. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to get, uh, we're just getting beers to go, we're on our way out of town, whatever. He rings it up, and we're going to get this one, we're going to get that one, and he gives it a box, and he puts it all in. I paid for it, did not tip. Did not tip. And I'm walking out, and I'm like, I don't feel bad for not tipping, because I just got beer to go, and uh, I don't feel bad for tipping. And I'm like... Obviously, I felt bad because I kept bringing it up to my wife on the whole drive. I'm like, I don't feel bad for tipping. And uh, I, should I feel bad? She's like, well, no. I mean, you know, he, you, you told him the can. So is, he's essentially just a vending machine, right? Uh, <laughs> kind of judging you, you right now, Mitch. Kind of judging you. Why are you judging for, for to go, for beer to go? Like, wh- why would you tip for that? So you're only tipping him for cracking the can. No, he's grabbing no, packs no, I'm, of cans, bringing them to me, and I'm saying and do it. you you would only tip him had he cracked a can open. No, I would tip him if he were serving me. If he grabbed a glass, that, that's what I'm a, saying. So he no, he, he went and grabbed the can. Fuck and he brought you. There's it to a you. difference. There's a difference between cracking a can and pouring a beer. You know that. I'm just saying he went and got something for you, uh-huh. Uh-huh. but the fact that it wasn't opened, you you don't tip him. No, the fact that I didn't stay to drink it and enjoy the services of the establishment is because I'm simply buying a product and leaving, like a grocery store. So, him packing a, a box for you, I'm assuming. Yeah. And you leave. Yeah, yeah. No tip. Yeah. Him pouring no. a single beer for you and handing it to you, tip. Yes. I would argue he probably worked harder than it would take to pour you a beer. The bullshit. Like grabbing a four pack out of the fridge and handing it to someone, or several four, or five, four packs, four four packs and handing them to me. Thank you. And versus pouring a beer, chatting, what do you want? Sit at the bar, have a drink. What else can I get you? Another one. So yeah, I would tip on sixteen fucking tap pours. Yes, but Six, four sixteen four packs. Jesus. Well, four four packs out of the cooler. No, I would argue the four four packs are the equivalent work workload of pouring you three beers. One beer, one beer. I'm I'm doing the for people only listening. I, I'm doing. I I'm still motioning. wouldn't. I, I still wouldn't. <laughs> no, I mean I would tip on one tap, but no. If I'm going into a place, buying a product and leaving, why would you tip? It's like going into Starbucks, ordering a coffee, and would you tip at Starbucks? If I drink coffee, yeah. You you would tip at Starbucks. Fuck you. No way. Okay, I, I, I tip, don't tip a start. Anywhere where tipping is uh, like available, I will tip. Wow. Here I thought you were Mr. Pink. Man. I love that speech. <laughs> I do love that speech. <laughs> See, okay. See, I walked into this I because here I thought... I'm, I went into this thinking, you know what? Mike will get it. He loves Mr. Pink more than anyone. I do And uh, he'll, he'll get it. But no. Well, no, I forget you're in the industry. You're in the street. No, you, you know what? I don't know. I'm sorry. But I'm like, I don't know. I well, it, I it, tip begrudgingly. I'm not one of those that doesn't tip. Anytime I tip, no, I, I tip minimum I 20%. Minimum 20%. But, but there, there but, is like a, a discussion to be had there. Because even one of my friends, uh, me and him, I say got into it. It wasn't like a fight. But it would be discussed it to where if he's getting food to go. Uh-huh. COVID aside, because COVID, everyone was tipping heavy during like takeout only. Okay. COVID aside, trying, yeah. Because okay. they were trying to take care of the people. But. Generally speaking, there is a conversation about um, takeout. Yeah. To where his argument was like, yeah, like I'm not sitting, I'm not taking up space, I'm just ordering food and leaving. Like I, I don't tip. And and my my retort was mm-hmm. bartenders and servers tip out the the kitchen based on food sales. So now they're not gonna be able to tip out the kitchen as much for cooking. What does that food. mean? Tip out. What does that mean, tip out? Uh, do you really not know, or are you just wanting me to explain for? No, that? I really don't know. So, I'm, I'm so like, if, if I'm bartending, excuse me, serving serving's a better example. If I'm if I'm a server, okay. and I make a hundred dollars tipping or in tips that night, granted that's okay. kind of a low amount, but just so we have a round number, hundred dollars. If you're a um, a good server who's who cares about the fellow staff, 
depending on food sales, I might tip five to ten dollars to the kitchen. Oh, okay. So my okay, my yeah. hundred dollars, I'm kicking five to ten bucks to the kitchen. Um, I might kick five to ten bucks to the bussers if they were helping my t- like clearing my tables for really well. for really lack of a better words I can't think of a better word but really it's the support staff for the waiters it's like you know yeah. kick back and, to the support staff and even the servers technically are supposed to tip out bartenders too because the bartenders are making all their drinks mm, okay and so like as a bartender I would tip out my bar back and the kitchen okay yeah and even and even there were times like uh, if if a security guard helped out doing something i might kick a kick a few bucks to him got it okay um, cool so back to okay back, back not to counting out. covid yeah, food not to COVID. go food to go my, my retort to him was yes but we tip out kitchen based on food sales so mm-hmm. if now your food or like you ordered food and you didn't tip on it we can't kick it down to the kitchen as much so you would be tipping yeah. the kitchen staff not the serving staff That's yeah kinda, oh no they would they would just be getting paid for making food yeah, that's what they're fucking getting paid for. I'm sorry. It's it's shitty, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, and if, you know, to not quote yet. Mr. Pink, if, if it's not enough, they can fucking quit and, uh, you know, or get a better. Um, it, it, it sounds it's more so just, shitty, I know. It, it's more, no, no, it's more almost like showing appreciation. It's like, let's say, let's say I was bartending and I put in, let's say the kitchen was swamped, right? And I put in tons mm-hmm. of food. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, even if they're getting paid like a high wage, I'm yeah. making much more than they're what they're making because of my tips. I get that. You you know for for our listeners, picture a scenario: you're a server. Let's say you're a server and you go to a table and they all order food, but you sweet talk them into ordering appetizers and more food and more drinks because you're just that good of a server. You're like, oh, you sure you don't want another beer, hun? Come on, you want one more beer? Cool, that's one more beer. That's another five dollars onto the bill. That's all if you add in the percentage going to the server. Now, the server can be a dick and just take it all, but really, all the server does is, is just the salesman selling the food, whatever. It's the cook. It's the it's the bartender that's actually doing the quote-unquote work that's really just like dishing it out. Um, and and so, they also can affect your tip. If they cook your like, food shitty... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, your tip's going gonna, gonna to reflect in the tip. And then, so, so that, not to mention... Kinda, you kind of scratch each other's backs a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And not to mention, I remember we had a meeting, this is years ago before COVID where people were pretty much the, the kitchen was complaining about not getting tipped out enough, blah, 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 blah. And so I brought it up to all the bartenders and servers. And I remember I pissed one of them off. Uh, kind of like what you said. Um, they were like, they just get paid. They get paid to cook. Why do we have to tip them out? And I was like, well, you get paid to serve. Should anyone tip you? And she was yeah. like, oh! <laughs> she got <all> <laughs> Um, <laughs> And no, so I would always, as a bartender, make sure like I'm not giving like all my tips out, but I remember I would I would always tip the kitchen at least mm-hmm. fair or heavy, so that yeah. I would know when I'm working, they know I'm going to tip them out. They're going to make my food good. They um, got my back. Yeah. yeah. Um, see, see, my cynical, my mom side of it goes like, you know what? You're right. You know what? No one gets tips. How about that? You know what? The server shouldn't get tips. Fuck it. Like no one gets tips. And, uh, you know, we're going to be just like every other country in the world. No one gets, no one gets tipped and, uh, go fuck yourself. You're, you get paid to serve food and sell food. You get paid to make it. You get paid to pour it done. Yeah. No, I, I think there's something to that. Cause I know I forgot the whole history of tipping. It was pretty much that like to people, I forgot what the, the history of it, but no, I, I think that's a fine idea. If, if, um, I actually thought of an idea, like it might be smart. It's like, let's say a, Fucking Bud Light's like four bucks. I'm just making up numbers. Yeah. If you charge five bucks, and then you pay the bartender a commission. Okay. So tipping yeah, out because he sold because he sold the beer. There's a yeah. commission. Yeah. Interesting. So the beer is okay. a little more expensive, but there's no pressure in tipping, and the bartender knows they're going to make a buck. Cool. Interesting. That I always kind of had that in the back of my head of, and, and granted, the customer can still tip if they want, but. Yeah, the bartender, the server, and like there'd have to be a, a whole algorithm of who gets what. In a uh, that's interesting because every other industry, that's how it works. When someone sells a product, they get a commission. Now, some of their now sometimes a salesperson, their job is almost expected. Like they're gonna sell stuff. Like in the industry mm-hmm. I'm in, it's like uh, you know uh, the sales means they'll they sell contracts service contracts it's like they're gonna get the contract it's a matter of how much they sell it for how often it's you know uh uh 
uh, revisit. What's the word? Revisited, revi- revitalized. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> that word. Anyway, Renewed, doesn't matter. Whatever. Renewed. Thank you. Um, the sales guy, like he's going to get the sale. What really matters is how much he sells or whatever. So like a server, you know, they're going to get, they're going to sell food, but what's the difference between one main course and some water versus two main courses, some appetizers and three or four drinks. It's yeah, like, it, that's where their commission comes in. Yeah. And I remember I, I talked about it with someone and the overall benefits, are, I mean, overall it's just, it would benefit. Cause like one incentive, issue, it's incentive. incentive. Yes. Because one, now you actually cut down on bartenders who steal. Now, to those who don't understand, st- bartender stealing is when they give they give away drinks. That's stealing okay. from their job. I know a lot of people are like, it's not the same thing. No, it is. If a beer costs $5 and you give a beer away, you just stole $5 from me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So now, that, because and, and bartenders do that to get better tips. But if they know they're making a buck on every sale... They're 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 not they're gonna be more incentivized not to steal. Yep. Two, kitchen. Let's say the kitchen gets a cut of some of the food, like they get a commission on the food they make. They're gonna be more incentivized to make sure the food goes out very well prepared, because they know yeah. if it gets sent back, they're they're gonna make less money. And then on top of that, as a bartender, one of the worst things about like cutting someone off is knowing that they're probably not gonna tip you. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. Um, because they get pissed off. If you know you are still going to be making 10 to 20 bucks on this tab, now the pressure of cutting someone off goes down dramatically because now I don't have to worry about this person getting pissed off and not tipping me. Interesting. There's, See, there's a lot a problem, of benefits to it. The more we talk about it, the more I'm like, yeah, because it takes away that obligatory tip, which every customer comes in and it's like, oh, I guess we got a tip. Um, even though this shithead just came up, said, what do you want? Wrote down what we want took it to the kitchen, brought the food to us like a, like a, like a, you know, any other job ever besides the food service industry beside, you know, for some reason, he's just that guy who changed the oil on my car. I went to Jiffy Lube, told him I wanted an oil change. He went and did the oil change and now I'm supposed to tip him. No, it's just, you know, that's what they do. But you add in instead of the obligatory tip and you add in an incentive by commission. Oh my God. It changes it's just, the whole game. It's just like what you said. If if I'm a server now and I know I'm making more money the more I sell, guaranteed. Yeah. Tips are never guaranteed. So guaranteed money. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to say, would you like to start with an appetizer? Would you like dessert? Would you like a cat blocking the camera? Would, <laughs> would, <laughs> yeah, no, that incentive to sell. Yeah. Yeah, you're 100% right. And then also on the drinking side, like I said, I'm repeating myself. You now have it's much easier to cut someone off because the pressure of them right. not tipping you is not there. Right. I've I've had bartenders who have overserved people very irresponsibly because they were worried about not getting tipped. Do you think the drive as a bartender? Let's say you're a bartender, a bartender, and you see someone ordering drinks. The incentive to get tipped by giving them what they want. Do you think that is as strong as the incentive to sell on commission? Because like I can see as a bartender would look at this person and be like, okay, I'm going to try to sell this person because I know they're going to like me and I know they're going to tip me well versus, okay, if I sell this Bud Light, that means an extra dollar for me. If I sell this Jim Beam on the rocks, that means an an extra dollar 50 for me. What, uh, you know, what do you think? So for me, the commit, I, for me, the commission would probably be in the 15 to 20% range. And okay. policy wise, I would still make I, I wouldn't tell the customer that that's what we're doing. Okay. So the cu- the customer would still tip accordingly. Um, but to me, it, it's more of an incentive of the employee to be loyal, to be honest and fair, etc. Because they're okay. getting they're getting guaranteed pay. Um, as far as so you're pretty you're pretty much asking, would I prefer an open tip or a guaranteed buck? As a bartender, would you prefer to work on tips or would you prefer to work in a scenario where there's no tips and only and commission? Uh, commission, yeah. See, and that's why my my policy, if, if, if I implemented it, would be the yeah. commission and tipping to where the customers don't know about the commission ah. because okay. y- y- there's something to it to where in my head it's like, if, let's say the commission was 15%. Yeah. Um, in my head, it's like, I know I could squeeze 25% in tips. 
Oh, interesting. So, okay. you, so you're, what you brought up is kind of true because even so, when we have big parties at the bar, we do have a thing in the computer that auto grats twenty percent. Auto gratuity is twenty percent. Right. Um, there's arguments of the legality of that, but we do it every now and then for very large parties. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem with the way our system works, and not all systems are like this, is that if you put that 20% auto gratuity on, it doesn't let them tip more on the credit card anyway. Okay, yeah. So every time there's a big party, the servers who are working it ask if they could put the gratuity on it. I always say, do you feel confident that they're going to tip above 20? Because once you put that 20 on, it's 20. Yeah. And that's always, they have to be like, ah, oh, I don't know. So that's the uh -huh. question you brought up is very interesting. Now, me... At the time when I bartended, because I could look it up, I would average between twenty three to twenty five percent. Nice. Okay. So if in the, if they were like you could have gratuity or you could have tips, if the gratuity was like fifteen percent, I might lean towards the tips. Yeah. Okay. But that's why, like I said, in, if I implemented it, it would be you both. mean commission, commission or tips, commission or tips. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Right. Um, right. I, I would probably lean tips if depending on the percentage of commission. But that's okay. again why in my scenario hypothetically it would be the commission would already be tacked onto it but again yeah. the customer wouldn't know and the customer would still be encouraged to tip interesting okay mm -hmm. well let's see how we do it very interesting i never thought about that until we were talking about it just now it said wow what if we what if our food service industry worked on commission base rather than tips that's interesting and so here, here's the thing and i actually uh, uh, the commission thing aside just tips for a moment and we'll, we'll go out on the tip conversation Mm -hmm. I'm actually very open to the argument, like you just said, every other country doesn't fucking do tips. Um, it still blew my mind. I was like 19. I went to Australia with my buddy and the hotel bartender, I like slid like a $5 coin or I forget what the fuck I get, but I, I, get, I try to give him a tip <laughs> and he slid it back to me and was like, just buy yourself another beer. Like he didn't even wow. want the tip. Wow. Um, so I'm open for the, the conversation of, okay. Should we pay servers and bartenders just more money and and not, not do tips anymore? Hmm. The the problem with that now, and, I, and this is where I want to get your thoughts, is so at my my greatest when I was younger, spry bartender extraordinaire, to make up for the tips I would have lost just working strictly hourly, you'd probably have to pay me somewhere between thirty to forty dollars an hour. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's like okay, so. If if because in California right now minimum is fifteen fifty. If you gave me the choice to work for a minimum plus tips or because a restaurant can't pay you more than twenty bucks an hour, yeah, like they could if they're, it's like high end, but like generally speaking, like a bartender, like like wise guys, they can't afford yeah. to pay somebody more than like twenty bucks an hour. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna be like fuck you, no. Yeah. If I'm not allowed to make tips, I'm not working. Bye. Right. Unless you pay me thirty to forty bucks an hour, that's what I'm losing. Mm -hmm. So, my, th this is where the philosophy things comes to you, and I want your, because I have my opinions on it, I want your opinions. So, let's say we do that, to where we have to pay now bartenders and servers somewhere between, let's just say $30 an hour. Your chicken tenders are now going to cost $20. Yeah. Yeah. Your your $5 Bud Light or $4 Bud Light is now costing 6 to $7, at least. That's being conservative. Yep. And... So I think a lot of people will get fucking pissed off. Even if, if they're like, I'd rather tip. And the ironic part of it is even if with the price increases, they'll probably pay the same amount. Mm -hmm. But it's the psychology of I'm paying more per beer. Fuck this. Your thoughts. So <clears throat> I think you accidentally just described my arguments against the raising the minimum wage because... That's the whole point. We raise the prices for what the servers want. That raises the price of the products for everything. Uh, we didn't want that. I mean, that's, that was kind of the whole point. The, the, the mentality of this entry level server position, which is a low skilled job. I'm sorry, but it's a low skilled job. You don't go to school to learn how to serve a beer to a table. Um, the fact that that, position deserves a living wage in my opinion seems pretty flawed it's uh like no it should be an entry level a younger like first time job kind of job it should be a shitty like kid who doesn't know what he's doing that is getting paid less than living wage so that way they can learn what it's like to work in the in the you know in the real world and then 
realize that's not what they want to do. So they have incentive to want to go learn other skills and learn how to be valuable and learn how to make more money somewhere else. So when you say like, you know, if they don't make tips, they won't make enough. It's like, no, yeah, well, yeah, they shouldn't make enough. Those positions shouldn't make enough. The The cashier at McDonald's doesn't make that. The, the server, at the, the cashier at McDonald's doesn't make tips or doesn't get tips. They don't get paid $30 an hour. So why does the server at Chili's who takes the order, puts it into the computer and brings the beer from the bar to the table deserve a 20% increase? Um, it just doesn't, it, it, I mean, you know, it sounds cold, but I'm like, I don't know. It, that doesn't seem right to me that they deserve a living wage, but you know, that's what, that's where my immediate thoughts went on that whole discussion. Well, <laughs> and, and we could talk about that. My, my question was more so, would you be okay paying more for your meal if you didn't have to tip? Well, I mean, you don't have to tip, but you understand what I'm saying. If the, if the social if pressure meant, was not there. If it meant service, then no, I would go to somewhere where the food was cheaper and I didn't get service and I could just take it and go. I mean, you okay, know, that's, that's fair. Cause that's, that's but, uh, what I think would happen if like right now we abolished tipping completely because I yeah. we don't have to get into it. I disagree with you that servers don't deserve a, a, a livable wage. Um, but I will say I agree that if you could show that the job is a tipping job, you could pay them less than minimum. I think that's fair. And I think most servers mm, okay. and bartenders would be okay with that. They do yeah. that in some, I think Florida, if it's implemented properly, because I know like, I think it was, I had, a, I knew a guy in Florida who delivered pizzas and because of that law that you could, Tip, uh, you can pay them less than minimum if it's a tipping job they paid him like two bucks an hour and oh interesting. Deli okay. and delivery drivers don't make like bartender tips right so he he, he was getting fucked let's be honest like yeah. but if it's implemented <laughs> if that kind of philosophy is implemented in the right way i'm okay with paying less than minimum if it's like a heavily tipping job well, I mean, first of all, I don't like the fact that the, the, the responsibility of how much a person gets paid is on somehow the employer. It should be on the employee to decide what they're worth and what they should be paid. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I, if I they got confused, but I understand. Yeah, go on. If they don't like what their compensation is, they can go somewhere the fuck else and, and get it. it it's, there's this weird kind of thing. It's like, I work for Domino's, so now it's Domino's job to pay me what I should be earning. It's that kind of mentality that I don't like. And and it's like, well, if you don't like what you're getting paid, quit Domino's, go work for Papa John's. Or, or, or demand that pay, more. and if they don't pay, then leave, yeah. Right, I understand right. that. Or, I, can, I, can, I can kind of get behind that. But um, point being, so you, but, you yeah, if no, they abolished, heard, if they abolished of, tips and the prices went up dramatically, you would just not go anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't buy that product. And it's like, well, shit. I understand the, <laughs> the, the duality of it, but I'm like, that's the point. It's like, yeah, they, well, yeah. if we... If we pay our servers more, we're going to raise the prices. Well, I'm not going to shop there then. Then you're going to fire your servers so you can keep the prices down. Um, yeah, that's the that's the I doom of raising the minimum wage. But Yeah, I remember specifically in the restaurant industry, I remember I was talking to somebody and it kind of pissed me off. Um, the book I started writing about growing up in a bar, this is in there somewhere. Um, I pretty <laughs> much was, the philosophy of tipping came up and they're like, yeah, like I don't mind tipping. Like, or they said that they don't like tipping. They don't tip. They don't believe in it. Blah 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 blah. And so they they said kind of like you know if the person wants to make more money, they should demand more money, or the restaurant should pay better. Whatever. I I don't I don't believe in tipping. And I, I posed them the question, but they they were they can't they go to restaurants all the time. These people I talk to, and I posed them the question. I was like, so you're, I think their bill was like sixty bucks. I was like, if they paid the server more, and that bill became seventy or eighty bucks, would you be upset? And they're like, yeah, don't raise the prices. Yeah. Like, yeah. but they said they said the restaurant should just pay them more. That was their their thought. The restaurant oh, should gotcha. pay okay. them more. Okay. I'm I'm not going to tip. The restaurant should pay them more. And so I said, okay, so they pay them more. Your bill is going to be ten to twenty dollars more expensive. Is that okay with you? They're like, no. So and that's that, why I was like, no. okay, you suck. <laughs> Okay, to that, no, I will agree. If it's like, hey, we're not going to do tips anymore, but your pr but your the prices will be 10 to 15% more or 20% more or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Because that because there's no difference on my end. It's either 20% to the waiter or an extra 20% to the overall price. There's no difference yeah. to me. The fact that it's an obligatory tip, it's like it's like it's like when 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 uh, companies give you your paycheck but then they send you what your paycheck's going to be after taxes. It's like, bitch, just give me what <laughs> money I'm getting kind of thing. It's yeah. like, no, the price on my end doesn't change. But that's, that's what I always hate when someone says like, oh, I make the number. I make 60 K a year. It's like, no, you really make like 50. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. No, it's 
yeah, no, it's um, the so tip, when the, it's the tipping argument, I think is very fascinating. Um, because you hit on the head, it shouldn't really be a thing. It should be like you have a job and you do it, and that's how it is around mm-hmm. the world. But for yeah. some reason, we got into this um, this culture of tipping, and I, well, I think it's at a point now to where it's you can't just change it. Right. Well, yeah, it's like it's like gun ownership or uh, our, our shitty electrical system or <laughs> driving on the right side of the road. It's like, no, it's too far. You can't change and it. You we, can't, we can't change it. It's the freeway system in California. We're not changing it. We're just going to have to make it work. Um, and, but that, and that's even why I'm going to pivot a little bit. I get mad when I get a bad server or a bad bartender. Oh, 100%. Not, I, mean, not I think because, everyone does. Well, no. So to, to clarify <laughs> the difference between slow service and bad service. Okay, yeah. So so I want to clarify that. Let's say you come into the bar I when I was bartending. Or me and you go to a bar. Agree. There's yeah. Already agree. There's a big difference. Yes. If if you we go to a bar and there's one bartender and there's fucking three deep around the bar and he has tables and it takes mm-hmm. him ten minutes to come serve us. Slow service, not bad service. We're cool. We're but cool. if me and you walk up to the bar, we're the only fucking ones there. Mm-hmm. And it takes ten minutes to get a beer. Bad service. Bad service, dude. Come on. Yeah. So I always get mad. Not when I have a slow, like I said, not a slow server, a bad right. server. Right. Because in my head, I'm like, you make your money off of ultimately commission tips. You, mm-hmm. this is how you make your money. Mm-hmm. Why are you bad? Why are you lazy? Don't you want to make more money? Yeah, it makes no sense. Like, yeah. I've never understood. I mean, if you're just not good at it, like you're trying your best and you're just not good at it, I get it. But if you're just like you don't give a fuck and you're lazy and you're not, I'm just like, don't you want to make more money? Like. I never understood. No, but it's that. And and then, and to me in my cynical side, I'm like, it's that shitty fucking, he knows he's getting tipped because we have to tip. So he can be as shitty as he wants. The tip isn't a tip. It's just an extra 20% that he knows he's going to get bullshit. And you know what? (laughs) I I will say this. I will say this as someone who I, I I always tip. I tip. Well, I try to encourage people to tip. If Mm -hmm. I get shit service, I have, I will not tip you. Mm. I remember I almost got into a fight. (laughs) Um, in college, uh, it was me, my buddy, and then three girls. We went to, I forgot what we were doing. We went to some bar on the other side of town. We were over there for some reason. Some little dive, you know, in Vegas. And, um, I don't remember the name of it. And what I ex- ex- just described happened. We went in and sat at the bar and the bartender was some cute little chick talking to these two guys. She looked over and saw us and kept uh-huh. talking to them. And it was just that them and us. That was it. And yeah. it took her literally like five minutes. We always talk about stage time. Think of really how long five minutes is. It's a long time. That's a when long time. Yeah. yeah, when there's nobody else in the building. And she came over, kind of attitude like ugh, the audacity of these people to sit down. Like just really fucking <laughs> attitude Got us our drinks, and she took her sweet time doing it. And we closed out, and um, it was my buddy. He paid for it, and he's like, he kind of looked at me, because he was a bartender. He was from Canada, but he was a bartender. Everyone... Mm-hmm. Everyone with me was either a server or a bartender at some point. And he kind of was like, I don't want to tip this bitch. He's like, I don't want to <laughs> tip didn't... her. What did she and, do? What did so she I do? Was... She came over and poured your beer and, uh. Well, yeah. And, and, and he was like, I'm, I don't really want to tip her that much. And I was like, that's fair. She sucks. And it wasn't even like she tried her <laughs> best and sucked. Like she didn't give yeah. a fuck. Yeah. And so I think our bill was like 20 something dollars. It was five of us. So and I think he tipped her like one buck. Yeah. Because he was kind of petty. Because sometimes tipping less. Instead, instead We've of talked about zero, that. Yeah, was, you tip I was, less. I was just going to bring that up because we talked. We brought that up. Like tipping zero, you'd be like, "Oh, they just forgot." But tipping one dollar on a twenty dollar bill is like, like fifty oh, cents. They yeah. Remember. <laughs> and, oh, they and, know. And, and my buddy was a he was he was one of those guys. He was a dick at times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so he tipped like one buck, and so we finished our drinks and we started to leave, and so she came over and grabbed the receipt as we were leaving, like because we that's that's right. We were actually waiting for more drinks. Oh, wow. And she okay. took forever. So he was just like, let's just close out. And that's when he's like, I don't want to tip her. I forgot that part. So we, we finished and we were, as we were walking out, like it put our shit on and everything. She came and grabbed the receipt. I forgot what she said, but it was something like, fucking jerks. Or she said something under her breath as she walked Woo! away. And of okay. course, my my friend, I'm, I would just be like, whatever, and walk away. My buddy was like, huh? <laughs> say it again. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and she was like, nothing. And he's like, no, what'd you say? And she's like, I just, you know, like 20%, like one buck, really? And so I, I, I'm the guy, I'm like, come on, dude, let's just fucking go. I don't care. <laughs> and so out, he was yeah. like, no, he, he was like, yeah, you, you deserved a dollar. 
And so the two other guys who like were probably her regulars were kind of like eyeing us, making sure. And she's like, "You, uh-huh. you guys just don't understand. You, you don't understand." And and that's when I was like, "I have actually bartended for years. My family owns yeah. a bar, and like yeah. every person like pretty much went through their credentials. Like I served yeah. here, I served that. Like so, we all know. Like you're just yeah. not good." And she's like, "Do yeah. whatever. Fuck you. You don't care. Blah blah blah." <laughs> And that's when, because all of my, all of them were like all about like, no, you suck. I was kind of like, look, I own a bar, and, you know. I was being nice about it, but they were like, no, you yeah. suck. Like you're, you're awful. There's only two people Woo. in here. You. And so then that's when the guys kind of stood up, like, like what they like they were gonna threaten us or something. That's where I like, let's get the fuck out of here. But yeah, so yeah. I know I'm I'm a hundred percent. If your service, not slow service, bad service. Bad service. If yeah. you're a bad server, especially if you don't give a fuck, like this bitch mm-hmm. just didn't care. If she was for some reason trying really hard and she just couldn't pour the beer right, so it took forever, and I'd be like, give her twenty. She's trying. She's, she's trying, doing her yeah. best. But the fact that the she didn't simple, give a fuck, it was like no. The, the simple fact of like you know, it's it's a busy day. You come, you finally come to the table with all your food, and you're like, guys, I'm so sorry. That took way too long than it should have. We're swamped. I'm swamped, and you know, no excuse. But here you go. Here you go. Just that would have been like excused everything. It'd be like, all right, you know what? She's yeah. she's trying. She's trying and she knows she's falling short. That's the thing. She knows she's falling short and she's like apologizing for it. That get a tip 100%. But yeah. the whole like, ugh, just tip me. Come on. Like, no, I, I agree. And that's what like, it's almost a rule I try to tell like newer bartenders is let's say same scenario. And this happened to me a hundred times. I'm swamped at the bar. Maybe we're understaffed. Maybe not. Whatever. I'm swamped mm-hmm. at the bar. You sit down. Mm-hmm. I might not serve you for 10 minutes, but if mm-hmm. I gave you the wave, like, Hey, I'm sorry, I'm busy. I'll be right with you as soon as I can. Yeah, that solves everything. That ten minutes now doesn't feel like ten minutes. Nope, it's fine because you know that it's at fine. least I acknowledged you. I'm trying. I've I've sat at Mike's bar when it was swamped when he was still bartending, and he looked right at me and gave me the middle finger, and I was like, you know what? I'll wait <laughs> as long as it takes. It's like, you know, it's just you're not fine. getting shit, Mitch. Fuck, Fuck out of here, Mitch. <laughs> Fuck you. It's for upstaging me last week, you asshole. All right. I actually. Who's next? I actually, um, there was, I may have told this story before. I, I got swamped. This was <laughs> years story. ago. Super swamped. I didn't have a server on the floor. It was just me and a cook. Ugh. And I, and out of nowhere, 3D at the bar, there were like seven tables. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, there's no way. And so one of the guys at the table, at a table actually kind of worked for us. So he, he's like, do you mind if I just get some sodas real quick? And I was like, yeah, come here. Yeah. And so we're, I just told him, I was like, just do me a favor. You need to go out there and tell those tables there's no fucking way I'm coming to their tables. <laughs> I was like, if you could tell them that politely, like there's no way I'm, t- I'm serving yeah. tables right now. There's no way Sorry. I'm going out to tables. And he said, yeah. And, and I even pulled the cook. I was like, no more food. Turn the kitchen off. You're, you're bar backing for me. No more food. Wow. Wow. Um, and I got tipped pretty well that night. Cause I was being honest with people. I was like, I'm trying my best. <laughs> like, I was just telling people, I was like, I'm trying my best. I, I, I have, yeah. I'm trying to keep up. I'm sorry. Like I get a basket uh. of fries. No, <laughs> no, Sorry. Nope. Food's closed. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but we're understaffed and we're overbooked. Sorry. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. Okay, cool. Well, you know, the, the, the tipping discussion is interesting to me. It fascinates me. It's one that like, cause I'll do it and I tip every time. And unless like, I think only once or twice I've had in horrible service and I've tipped 10% instead of my usual 20. That's um, kind of how I am too. I'm, I'm always going to tip, but I might tip less. I'm, I'm the same way. Like yeah. once or twice I'll tip less, but most I tip every time and I'm begrudgingly tip and I'll bitch and moan about it. And I'll like sit down at a, where in a conversation where I have nothing to lose and I'll bitch about tipping the whole time. And you know, that's, that's <laughs> the, me. The way I've, I've heard tipping, we can go out on this. We're going a little long. The, okay. I, I've heard, um, a comparison to tipping to buying a, a ticket for a flight that, yeah, you can. And, and granted, this is like, Coming from a man, like a manager level, like my manager hat, I hate this buying, comparison. Buying a buying a ticket for what? An airplane, like a flight. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. Um, I hate like the manager hat and owner hat on. I hate this, but as a bartender, I'm like, no, yeah, hundred um, percent. It's like buying a ticket for a flight. You could buy, pay the bare minimum, and you'll you'll still get that flight. You're still gonna get uh-huh. to where you're going, or you could pay a little more. Mm-hmm. And now your flight's going to be more enjoyable. The comparison being, because like even I I remember good tippers, even if they only come in one or t- once or twice, I will remember that good tipper. Yeah. And you're damn fucking well sh- better be sure if they come in again and I see them come in, 
I'm, I mean, granted, I'm not going to like give someone else shitty service to make sure they get good service. I'm going to give good service <laughs> to everyone, but I'm going to make sure they get good service. What's the the line in Reservoir Dogs? We keep saying Mr. Pink in Reservoir Dogs, yeah. but there's this great line in Reservoir Dogs where he says, "What would be special special service? Take you out back and suck your suck dick." dick? <laughs> Is it, I go over twenty for that. I I'd go over twenty for that. Um, no, so but I, I remember that. Like you, you remember that as servers and bartenders, if, especially if someone yeah. tips well. So yes. if you tip yeah. well, you know you're going to have a better time. Granted, the manager side of me is like it, a tip should not affect service. True. But but even yeah. as the bartender okay. side of me, if you tip me shitty, I'm still going to give you the same service. I'm not going to treat you less. But if you right. give me a good tip, I'm going to make sure you get good service. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, even even like there'd be sometimes people, good tippers would come to the bar, get a drink, close out, tip fat, and then go sit at a table. And I would tell the server, be like, hey, make sure that you fucking take care of them because then you're going to get some cheese tonight. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I look at it is like, yeah, you don't have to tip, but if you do tip, you're going to get a better experience. Which is, quite frankly, the definition of a tip. That should be what a tip is, is that I extra agree. bit. I agree. And it's like, yeah, it, it should not be mandatory. It is. We say it isn't, but it is. A tip is mandatory. We have a whole culture built around spending money, it, and a you know tip what? is mandatory. Let's take it back. A tip, <laughs> fuck. A tip is the equivalent <laughs> Of not going in the express lane when you have more than fifteen, you, you can go. You can go into the express lane with more than fifteen, no, see, and everyone's gonna no. fucking hate you. But you can disagree. do it. Disagree. At least in you know. No, I disagree with that. But no, it's <laughs> not that. Even, it's not even that bad. I think. I think tipping is even more demanding than the not going into the fifteen hours. It's like it's that, like you tip. It's what you do. I, I will say there the stigma around tipping is very strong. The stigma on tipping is like putting your blinker on. There's no hardcore <laughs> law that says you don't need to put on your blinker, but everyone fucking does it because that's what you're supposed to do is you put your blinker on before you turn. You tip when you order food at a restaurant for some reason, but not McDonald's. And yeah, yeah. And it shouldn't be mandatory. It should be like you go the extra mile, you get a tip, which is what tip means. But yeah. I'll have to look in. So I remember looking up the history of tipping and there was some like at a time it made sense. Mm. But now it doesn't. I, for, I forgot. But like yeah. I said, it's 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 part of the culture. Um, All right. Well, that's it. I'm done. Done. Fucking done. We're not talking anymore. We're done. We're cutting it off. <laughs> I'll just no, say, even, even I'll roofied, say. I apparently tipped okay. <laughs> Did you get your receipts? I, I at messaged least the bartender the next day asking if I closed out and everything. So. Oh wow. Okay. Just so, like, yeah. yeah, you did. You did great. All right. What happened? Wait, did I? Nope. Did I freeze? No. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I got a prompt on my on my camera here. It said oh, my camera, my phone. my phone. My phone gave me a prompt. It's like use this action. I'm like, oh shit, what just happened? Nope. I cleared. Okay. Cool. All right. Anyway, With Mitch's phone uh, erroring out. We'll go out on that. <laughs> All right. Hey, happy St. Patty's and uh, have a good March rest of March, guys. Yep. All right. And we'll see you. We'll see you later.